The Nikon Z6 is a full frame camera that crushes both stills and video. It has features and capabilities that you won't find in another camera until you start pushing $10,000 plus. Today I'm going to tell you why you should buy one if you are looking for a killer online content camera. Let's get to it. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So straight off the bat, I'm a huge fan of the Z6. I've already made plenty of videos about it, already comparing it to most of the other big online cameras currently on the market and even one on why I moved away from a Sony A3 to this. Most of those videos end up trying to be a balanced approach of why this camera might or might not be worth it for you, but this is not one of those videos. This is me spending the runtime gushing over how much I like this camera and why I think you should get one. A couple of quick notes before we start. I'm not a photographer, though I am starting to dabble and maybe in the future we'll talk more about photography aspects of cameras. Today we are sticking straight to why this works for the online content creator, be that YouTube slash Facebook slash whatever else is new that an old person like me doesn't know about. Second and final note, now I do want to say something is I only make these why you should buy videos about gear that I've personally purchased. Sure, there are a lot of great cameras out there that I will recommend, but I'll only make one of these sorts of video if I've personally got skin in the game. I did recently sell my A5100 and M50 to fund some of this stuff, but here is my RX100 Mark V my X-T3, and the GH5 is currently recording me. So these are all cameras that I personally own. And on that note, let's actually swap out the GH5 for the Z6 so that the rest of the video will be shot with this, my favorite of cameras. <laughs> on to the exciting part that actually involves the camera, hooray! This is actually an exciting time for hybrid video production as there are a ton of good options out there. But what makes the Z6 awesome is there is a combination of image quality and ease of use that I haven't really found on too many other cameras. First, let's cover the image quality. The Z6 can record in 4K 30 frames per second, full sensor width. And if that's not enough, it can also do 422 10-bit out to an external recorder. That's fantastic. Like legitimately, while my GH5 and X-T3 can do the same thing, they don't have that huge full frame sensor. I love the image that I get out of the Z6. Now it is a little too contrasty for me when you use the standard picture profile, but it's really easy to go into the settings and turn that down to a more manageable level. Like right now we're on the 50 millimeter 1.8 S lens. I do think it's a little too blurry background at 1.8, but just for purposes of the video, we're doing that, but it's so good. And once you dial in your settings, you can get some straight fire images. I mean, they're not actually on fire, but you can get some great stuff out of the camera. It will also do a pretty standard these days, 1080p at 120 frames per second, which isn't groundbreaking in the least, but it is better than the 720p 120 frames per second of, of some of its more expensive competition. That's a true story. Something that really helps with the image quality is having video that's actually in focus. And while it doesn't have the continuous eye autofocus like my X-T3, the face tracking on the Z6 you know, like right now, has worked pretty darn well so far. I have pretty sensitive eyes, so when I'm outdoors, I'm almost always wearing sunglasses, and that causes havoc with some cameras autofocus. Like, eye autofocus doesn't work so well if you have something covering your eyes, right? I mean, that's kind of like a thing. Like, if you can't see your eye, you can't focus on it. But the Nikon phase detection system works if I've got sunglasses on, and that is huge for me. And autofocus becomes really important if you are in front of the camera the whole time and you want your full frame lens wide open because that shallow depth of field is really rough to nail with manual focus if you can't actually touch the camera. Like we're pretty, like we are not close to being able to hold the camera right now. So we need to work on autofocus. And hopefully the autofocus right now is not making a fool out of me because I can't, I can't look up the monitor to confirm it all the time. So, but I'm, I'm, I'm confident. I'm confident enough to, we're not gonna take another take of this video, so please be in focus. I do wanna touch on the price here really quickly because I did bring that up in the beginning and these full frame cameras can be expensive and the Z6 does not escape this. It's $2,500 including the kit lens. That's not cheap. And if you have a smaller budget, there are other cameras that I would recommend for you. But you do need to pay for a certain level of quality and that's, that's not a camera thing, that's just a life thing. And and I do think the Z6 is reasonably priced for what you get. Talking about that price and what you get for it, let's talk about this 24 to 70 kit lens. This is without a doubt, like not even close, 
my favorite kit lens of all time. I do really like the kit lens of the X-T3. I mean, it's probably tied for second. And the kit lens with the GH5, the 12 to 60 Leica, it doesn't, this does not get enough credit. But those are my other two favorite lenses. But the 24 to 70, it's crazy. I mean, it's small, it's lightweight. I mean, look at this. It's barely bigger than a micro four thirds zoom lens. I still can't believe how much lens technology they were able to pack into here. And you get this for $600 included with the kit. Whew. I'm having problems not talking in too much hyperbole right now because of how much I like this. Clearly there is some hyperbole because this is a very biased video on a camera that I purchased and I really, really like, but I, I will try to keep it in check, kinda. I'll kinda try to keep it in check. Onto the body itself because a lot of what makes a camera useful to me is how easy it is to use, right? Right? I mean, I do say that constantly from every mountaintop. I don't actually have any mountaintops near me, but if I did, I would shout that from there. The Z6 certainly isn't my favorite camera body of all time. That goes to the EOS R, followed by the GH5. These, I mean, I just love how they handle. But the Z6 is no slouch either. The buttons all feel great, and they work even better. I like the mini HDMI more than I like the micro HDMI on anything. I do like full HDMI the best. And as someone that plugs in audio power and monitor a lot, like right now, I like that the port flap covers just get the heck out of the way. Just don't, don't get in my way, just get out of it. But not only is the physical control of the camera awesome, but the menu system is a breeze. In my other videos about the Z6, I do talk about this because one of my main concerns when this was first released is I never really used a Nikon camera before. And using the D3500 for a video earlier last year made me very nervous about trying to learn this confusing menu system. And you know what? That didn't need to be a concern of mine as the system is really easy to understand understand and to navigate. Plus the rear screen is fully touch enabled. So being able to switch through the settings or pick a focus point can be done lightning fast. When it comes to focusing another big benefit and one that I sorely missed this week when making videos about the RX100 Mark V and the G7X Mark II is you can have continuous autofocus on, but you can also move the manual lens focusing if you need to give a little nudge for that continuous autofocus to start working. Sometimes you'll have to switch between manual focus and continuous autofocus to get that to work. But here there's no messing around. It just works. So good. Oh, but real quick, I do want to talk about something. So let's switch back to the GH5 for just a second. <laughs> back to the GH5 really quick for this next thing. Now, something that I don't talk about a lot is the weight of the cameras because generally I do very little handheld work, but my overhead rig right now is the Rode PSA-1 and that's worked great for the RX100 Mark V. It's even worked great for the X-T3, but I was nervous about the Z6, but the Z6 is light enough for this to hang without me having to worry about the suspension. Like, I don't have to worry about it falling or anything like that. It just now works as my overhead camera rig. Like, that's so awesome because this, I need something light to do overhead shots when I do unboxings. I cannot believe I've got a full frame mirrorless camera hanging over above me right now. It's, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, back to the Z6. <laughs> and we're back to the Z6. Look, I just really like this camera and I think it has values for days to the online content creator. Let's talk about the last few things I wanna mention before we close this video out. XQD has kinda won me over. Yeah, I didn't think that would happen either and it's still a darn expensive recording media, but the speeds at which you can transfer files is right up there with ludicrous speed. It's blazing fast and saves you so much time when you're constantly transferring files to make video. I do still wish they would drop in price and hopefully here with CF Express happening sometime in the future, you can get some more reasonably priced cards. I have a 120 gigabyte card in this thing right now and I don't really wanna say how much it cost because it's a lot. And the last thing that I love and really the reason for you to get this camera is Nikon takes the camera and its video recording capabilities seriously. Right now, today, the features I've listed off in this video are enough for me to say, go out and get one of these. It's the best in the market for the price. But future firmware updates will continue to push this over the competition. Here soon, we'll be able to record ProRes RAW through the HDMI port to a Ninja recorder. That's insane. Also here soon, we'll get eye autofocus enabled and improvements to an already excellent system. That's crazy. And like I mentioned previously, we should also be getting an update to work with CF Express cards that will make rugged, fast recording media cheaper, faster, better. That's some other synonym of crazy. Again, this is my personal Z6. I paid for this out of my own pocket. Nikon isn't paying me to say this. 
If you are in the market for a full frame video camera, you should absolutely get the Z6. It's just darn good. Thanks for watching.